Hey, we're shaking guys. So if you didn't know, I'm actually a mixed martial arts coach and I used to fight and I've cut weight a bunch of times and I'm actually the person at the gym that usually helps people with their weight cuts. And I noticed on YouTube, there's no real videos on how to cut weight properly. So this was a video I originally made for my fighters. They're gonna be competing in Golden Gloves. So the reason I'm saying Golden Gloves and stuff in the video is just because of that, but whether it's a uh, uh, MMA fight, a wrestling match, boxing, kickboxing. The same process is going to be for all this. This is to do it safely. And um, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, leave them down below. And let's hit it. Hey, how's it going, guys? So this is Dylan from MMA Underground. And I know a lot of you guys got golden gloves coming up. But depending on when you're watching this, who knows what you have coming up. So right now, we got a bunch of people getting ready for golden gloves. So I'm going to do a little video here just showing you guys how I want you to cut weight. If I was the one fighting, what I would be doing. I know my beer belly... Physique, you know, me just coaching all the time. I don't really train that much anymore. I'm totally out of shape. I mean, I never missed weight. I used to fight 145 pounds. I would cut from 180. Uh, the thumbnail of this video is what my, it looked like when I was cut. I actually have a certification in uh, sports nutrition and uh, fit and that uh, in personal training from the National Council of Certified Personal Trainers. So, I trust me. I know what I'm talking about. Um, okay, so when you're doing this, the most important thing is your diet. Okay, like. As a, as a fighter, you just have to show up to the gym. It's our job as coaches to make sure you work hard and stuff. So just get your butt to the gym. And then once you leave the gym, let, other than going for a run or stretching or going for a swim or something like light, the, the, the work hard part isn't what I'm worried about. It's worried about everything else. Now, when you are cutting weight, when you're a fighter, you have to live your whole life like it's training from like a month out of your fight until the day of your fight. Um, the longer you're doing it before you fight, the better. So I'm going to say this is for if you're starting about a month out from your fight, to two weeks out. This will work if you're two weeks, but a, the longer the better. You're going to want to be about a month out from your fight to make this a little easier. Okay, so first thing I want you to do, number one, is I don't want you setting unrealistic goals. So if you're, say you weigh 225 pounds, you're not trying to fight at 185. I'll try to get you at like 200 the lowest, you know. You don't set anything too crazy. Don't, don't make this any harder than it has to be. The bigger you are, yeah, the more weight you can cut. But if you're somebody, you're only like 140 pounds per, say you weigh like 137, you know, you're not gonna try to go all the way to 120. You're gonna try to go to 130 and be healthy and at that weight. This is, this whole process is to avoid you guys having to go to the sauna and blast out 10 pounds and do something really unhealthy that's not good for your fighting career, not good for your life in general. This is just, if you have to go to the sauna, it'd be the last pound, two pounds at the moment. You know, this, is, this is meant to get you there before anything else, okay? So first things first. We need to change our diet completely. We need to do uh, like a modified keto type diet. Your body's natural form of energy is carbohydrates. So we're trying to take carbohydrates completely out of our diet. So that way our body is forced to use its own fat. Um, you used to hear all the time that when you starve your body, your body will actually eat its muscle. Well, that is partially true, but a ton of studies in the last 10 years have proven that your body will eat its fat before it'll ever eat the muscle, especially if you're still giving it, well, if you're still giving it nutrients, that is. Okay, so here's how we're gonna do this. Is first things first, is your water is your number one most important thing. If you don't drink enough water every day and you don't make weight, it's 100% your own fault. This is just as important as going to the gym. If you don't finish your gallon of water, you gotta think of that as like a day you skipped the gym. Okay, so what I need you to do is, I need you to, from a month out, or two weeks out, whenever you start your cut, you gotta start drinking at least a gallon of water every day. Every freaking day. This is actually, you can get in a habit of this and it makes it a lot easier. What, what I would do is, I'd go like this, say I woke up at nine o'clock, I'd put a little mark here with a marker, 10, 11, 12, one, two, three, four, five. I would try to get my water done by five o'clock. Any more I drank after that is better. But the rule of thumb is you need to drink half your body weight in ounces of water a day. Um, a, a gallon is a lot of water, so it's an easy way to just say for whoever. But the scientific term is you, like way is you need to drink your half your body weight in ounces of water. But every time you drink something that dehydrates you, like a coffee or a pop or like a diet soda, you're not you shouldn't be drinking soda at all. If you drink a diet soda, it's not the end of the world, but you shouldn't be doing that. It dehydrates you, so you need to add whatever. So you drink a 12 ounce coffee, you got to add 12 more ounces. So you want to get in the habit of just drinking water. You can put some citrus fruit in here that actually is a natural fat burner, and that will help you. So that's something you can do. But first thing what you want you to do when you wake up in the morning, chug a bunch of water. Try to get past the 10 a.m. before it's even 9 a.m. yet, you know, or whatever. Just try to get a head start on your day. The more you drink early, the easier it is. So drink a bunch of water, and then I need you to have breakfast 
within 20 minutes of eating up, of waking up. This, this is also something that studies have proven like in the last like five, 10 years that it's extremely important. Your metabolism, a lot of it is based on what you do when you first wake up. So when you first wake up, if you eat, your metabolism will start going, your body, your blood sugar will start regulating and you'll start, you know, you're, you'll get hungry, you'll get hungry, eat earlier. The goal here is to eat every time you're hungry. We're gonna try to eat every two to three hours. So you're actually gonna be eating quite a bit, just not a lot of time. So for breakfast, I want you to have something healthy. If you like bread, this is the only time of the day you can have bread, is at breakfast. And it can only be one piece and it has to be a wheat type bread, like a whole grain wheat bread or something. You could have that with a piece of avocado and an egg on it. That's something you could do, you could do. If I was in a hurry, I used to do a protein shake uh, with, with a bowl of oatmeal and that was really all I would have or if I had time I would do like turkey bacon and eggs you can have regular bacon but you know it's, some things there's a lot of sodium in bake, both kinds of bacon but there's a lot of fat do you want to fat's okay but you don't want to overdo it you know so just live in moderation make two pieces of bacon at the most with two eggs and you got to keep it light okay so right when you wake up you want to eat breakfast so then 20 minutes get your metabolism going because your metabolism um, you got to think of your metabolism like um, like a trampoline, okay? So your metabolism, you want to keep it between 80 and 120. That is where your, or sorry, your blood sugar, and that's where your metabolism will be the fastest. You'll be burning stuff super fast because say you wait to eat, you don't eat breakfast, and then two hours go by, maybe you go for a run, your blood sugar is so freaking low. So then you eat something, your blood sugar is not just going to go like, in the middle here, we'll call this 80 to 120. Your blood sugar is not just going to go here. It's going to go way up here, and then it's not going to like trickle down. Your blood sugar goes like this. Boom, 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 before it finally becomes in the middle. So the trick is just every time your blood sugar gets a little low, you give it just a little bit to put it right back to the middle. That's the whole goal in this whole process and to make you your body run. And you'll notice you you'll have a lot more like energy in the morning. You'll be you'll just trust me, you'll wake up hungry. At first it might be hard to eat like in the morning, but after you do this for a while, you'll start waking up like your, your hunger will wake you up like, oh, it's time to eat, you know? Okay, so you're gonna do that, okay? Then two to three hours from then, I want you to have a protein shake, okay? But not just any protein shakes. You need to get, it doesn't have to be this company. I'll put links down below and some you can get, but this is a combat powder. And the reason I like this is because it's a, it's a high protein, low carb. That's what you need. There's 25 grams of protein to five carbohydrates. Because for our whole day, we gotta keep our carbohydrates under around 30 grams to put our body into ketosis where it will start burning its own fat for energy instead of the carbohydrates. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get something like this. Also why I want you to get this and not just like a whey protein. Whey protein is a fast acting protein. It breaks down in your body like around 30 minutes where there's other types of protein like casein protein which goes really slow which is like normally what people have before bed and stuff. This has all, it has five different types of protein. It's got whey isolate, which is like just the, at the molecular level of the whey. Um, it's got whey hydroisolate, it's got whey concentrate, it's got egg protein, it's got casein protein, and it's got molecular casein. So that's six, well, two of them are almost the same thing. It's just, but it's really like five types of protein. So anyways, some of these are fast, some of them are medium, and some of them are slow. So like a slow burning protein breaks down like six to eight hours. Um, where like fast acting protein like whey, you know, it's good to have right after you work out, you know, whatever. But we're using this as a meal replacement. So we need to be, giving our body a constant like flow of amino acids and to just keep our energy levels up to keep our metabolism up. So this is gonna be like like a food replacement. You gotta almost think of it like that, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna eat a good breakfast. Two and a half hours later, you're gonna have a protein shake, okay? Then a couple hours after that, you're, you're drinking water the whole time, you're gonna have a light lunch. For lunch, um, salads are always gonna be your best option, but I don't want you putting any crazy dressings on them. The only dressings you can use are like vinaigrettes. Anything with like a vinegar based is fine. Um, and you, you're going to want some protein. You can put eggs on it. You can put any type of lean meat. You can even put beef. I wouldn't do beef every day, but you can do beef, chicken, fish, um, whatever the portion is. Usually they say around six ounces, but it's different for everybody. What they say, like what we learned in our book is the size of your fist, that's how much protein you want. That's what I would always do. I'd have like, for me, it's a pretty small chicken breast. Um, you know, it's it's not the best, but it's enough to get you through. That's why you're having it with your salad. And with your salad, you can have as many greens as you want. You actually want a lot of greens because this is going to help you with your, you're going to need more fiber because you're going to be on such a high protein diet. This is going to help your digestive system. You throw peppers in there. Peppers actually are natural fat burners, so those are good and all that stuff. Okay, so that's what you're going to do. And then a couple hours from then, when you start getting hungry again, like you're between, this is usually like before I go to the gym. You know, it's like after lunch. 
but you still got a couple hours, you know, you're probably going to go to the gym in about an hour and then you'll have your dinner when you get home from the gym. So what I used to do was I would have a grapefruit because grapefruit is actually the natural, the strongest natural fat burner in the entire world. Um, so I would have a grapefruit and I'd eat that and I'd have another protein shake. And then usually I'd feel good. Maybe like I have half a handful of peanuts or almonds. Because almonds are a lot better than peanuts for you. Um, but anyways, yeah, I would do something like that. You know, it, remember these are guidelines. You can change them, but you just got to keep your carbohydrates low. Um, that's the most important thing and keep your protein up. Okay, so then once you're doing that, you're going to go to the gym. And then when you leave the gym, you're going to want you to have a nice good meal like right after, right after training. Not like... Not like the second you leave or whatever. If you're if you're not gonna be able to eat right away, have a protein shake right after you leave the gym, and then right when you get to the gym, or sorry, sorry, after you, right when you get home from the gym, start making your dinner or whatever. Um, but yeah, you, for dinner you're gonna want like some type of uh, complex carbohydrate. So carbohydrates have a number. It's called their glycemic index from one to a hundred. Simple carbs are things that like turn to sugar right when you eat them, like potatoes and stuff like that have a very low glycemic index, where something like asparagus is really high. So like the asparagus is always like the best option I found for my diet. I would always lose the best, but uh, broccoli, green beans, anything, basically any green vegetable is fine. So you're going to want a good portion of that. You cook it with olive oil, salt and pepper, garlic, whatever, just throw it in your oven. And fresh are always better than frozen. There's more nutrients and they taste better. Everybody wins. And most of them they're cheaper. So I'll always say get fresh produce. Okay, so get that. And then you're going to have another portion, like the fist size of any type of meat you want. Um, you know, or whatever. You're going to want some type of protein. So I usually do like fish for dinner. Um, at the time when I was used to cut weight, I used to work at this restaurant. And I, like I would get the fish that wasn't, like we had too much and we didn't want it to go bad. Like I would get to take some home. So that's usually what I would do for dinner. Okay, then you're just going to, as long as your water's done and everything, you're going to chill out. You're going to relax. You're going to try to get your mind right. And then right before you go to bed, you're going to have a protein shake. Because, uh, especially because these are like time release proteins, this is going to keep your metabolism going while you're sleeping. And then this, you're actually going to notice you lose a lot of weight. Just this, just doing this trick alone will help you lose weight. Taking out, even if that's all you did was you took a protein shake before you went to bed, didn't change anything else, you'll see a slight difference. But doing it with everything else is going to make a drastic difference. Okay, and during this whole process, I need you guys to cut out alcohol basically completely because alcohol is broken down in your body the same way that sugar is. So that's why, that's why you always see these alcoholics, they quit drinking and then they gain a ton of weight because they get, their bodies are always craving carbohydrates. So they start eating more candy and junk food and stuff and they always balloon up. And that's just natural because your body, some of you get like headache. You guys, that's a common thing was like alcoholics when they quit drinking, they get headaches. And it's because their body is craving the sugar that comes, because like alcohol is actually made from fermented sugar. Like if you've ever made beer or anything. Okay, we're getting off topic, but yeah. So you want to totally cut Cut all that out. If anything, you could have like one glass of red wine or like uh, vodka water. You don't want any beer. There's too much carbs. Um, also, too, things like beer make you bloat. Um, every one carbohydrate molecule holds on to two water molecules. Also, too, so not only is this making you not be able to go into ketosis, the whole process of doing this is so you don't bloat. That's why when you go out and you get drunk with the boys or whatever, you eat a pizza, you, you retain a lot of water and you bloat. And this, we're we're flushing out all these carbs by drinking all the water. So you'll notice in the first three days, you're going to pee every 20 minutes. You're going to have to go to the bathroom. But then your body's going to start getting used to it because your body's going to start holding the water or glycogen, which is like sugar, sugar water in your body. What's hell? Your muscles are made out of, they're basically bags of glycogen, which is sugar water. So once you your body gets used to this, your body's going to start holding this in your muscles. And you'll notice, you're, even though you're, you're dieting and you're losing weight, your muscles might still get bigger. And that's the whole process of this, is putting more glycogen and giving more protein to repair our muscles, uh, going to the gym and everything. Okay, so now you've been doing this. The whole goal of this is to, if you do this, you'll probably lose about a pound a day at first, and then it might slow down. But you're going to lose a lot of weight at first when you first do this. And you're going to keep at this. Uh, if you ever, if say you're close to your goal, maybe you can have a cheat meal like once a week, but don't make it a whole cheat day. And if you have a cheat meal, the most important thing is don't skip the next meal. Just start back on your diet like it was because you don't, the whole thing of this is keeping your body in a rhythm. Uh, and if you're ever going to cheat, it's better if you just cheat small, you know, and like don't, because the whole purpose of here isn't to make our blood sugar up now. Remember that. That's the whole thing. Okay. So now we've been doing this. Say we start, okay. Say we, I started at 140 pounds and my goal is to make it to 130. I've been doing this for two weeks, a month, whatever. Now it's uh, okay. So say the fight is Saturday. Today's Monday. So on Monday, I'm going to say, I got to drink now two gallons of water a day. Okay. If you, 
if you are like a small fighter, like a 25, especially if you're a woman, a, at least a gallon and a half. But you'll, you honestly, you're probably okay with a gallon and a half. Boys, especially if you're bigger than, if you're 145 and over, you need two gallons. Um, male bodies just hold more. Males have naturally more muscle. Um, their bodies hold more water, and it's more. It's even more important. But yeah, this is this is the most crucial part in this whole thing. If you don't drink this water and you don't make weight, once again, this is 100% your fault. Okay. And I, now I would do the same thing, but I would write it out differently. So I would try to have like this one done by like one o'clock. And then I would do it like two o'clock, three o'clock, four o'clock, five o'clock, six o'clock, seven o'clock, eight o'clock. I try to have this one done by eight o'clock or something. But you got to do the same thing and you can walk around with it all freaking day. Um, definitely. This is the single most important thing. Okay. And then this is Monday. The fight is Saturday. So from Monday to Wednesday, you need to do this. Monday through Wednesday, you have to do this. Okay, and then you need to eat a little more salt in your diet. So, say you're you're having that midday lunch or whatever with your your chicken or whatever you cooked, throw a little salt on there, or one or you know or, or have like a, have some pork rinds. Actually, there's a lot you can't eat potato chips or anything, and if you have a lot of really crunchy cravings, occasion you can have pork rinds. They have a lot of sodium in them, so you don't want to do them too much. But on these days where you need where you are doing the two gallons of water, we're trying to retain as much of it as possible. So these three days. Have a bag of pork rinds. I don't care. Do it. <laughs> okay, so these three days you're going to do the diet all the same, but you're going to do the water and add some salt, okay? Now, on Thursday, we're going to eliminate it back to just one. So we're going to go back to what we originally started with, our just one gallon, okay? Then on, uh, on Friday, we are going to cut it to only half a gallon, okay? Now, if you're boxing, like you guys doing Golden Gloves, you have to weigh in the same day. So we're just saying the fight Saturday. Saturday, from when you wake up, you're really just going to take a swig of water, like a mouthful of water. That's it you get for the day. But by doing this, you and you're going to be training these last couple days. But I want I don't want any weights. I don't want nothing that's going to strain your body. I want lots of cardio, but kind of lower intensity. Nothing bad on the joints. Uh, jump roping's fine. Uh, any stationary type stuff. Just no weights. Um, if you are using weights, nothing more than just like five pounds. You maybe shadow box with. Stuff like that, nothing crazy, no bench pressing, no squatting, no nothing that's gonna make you sore, okay? The last couple days, it's all about just sweating and getting getting this out, okay? So you wanna, we're gonna do the water, and by doing this, your body is getting used to having all this water. You've been doing a whole month or two weeks of drinking a whole gallon every day, so the when you cut it down to that day you only had half, that day you're gonna try, that's basically the, gonna be the day you make weight. Um, you're gonna have a half a gallon, and on your half a gallon, I still want you to do like, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, whatever. Okay? So you are going to do that and everything exactly the same. You're just going to do that to to totally the same, but you're going to have half a gallon. And you that's the day you're going to cardio like crazy. Okay? Then if you have to cut weight when you wake up, say your say your fights say, you know, in the afternoon or whatever at 5 o'clock or something, you wake up, you check your weight, you're two pounds over. Okay, then that's the day that you do have to go to the sauna a little and get the last couple pounds out or go to the gym, put on a sweatsuit, jump rope a little. Um, once again, nothing where it's like high intensity, nothing nothing crazy, nothing that's going to strain your muscles, strain your joints. Um, and that day, all you're going to eat is you're going to do this is kind of gross. So what you're going to do is you're going to take like a scoop of protein and you're going to put it in your protein shaker and you're going to take a splash of water and just enough to make it like a pudding, like a paste. And then literally all you're going to do is if you're not on weight and you're trying to cut weight, like when I would go to the sauna, I'd go in the sauna for like 20 minutes, check my weight, do it one more time. And then I'd feel like I was going to die. I'd have like half a spoonful of the pudding mixture or whatever. And that's just to keep, because you don't want to be on a total starvation mode. The whole purpose is to keep your amino acids going and everything. And your diet, you're going to keep your diet basically the same until the day you cut it in half. That day you're just going to go a little lighter. Uh, but you're going to do eat all the same stuff. You're just going to eat a little bit lighter. Um, remember, anytime you're dying and you, you need something, you can have a protein shake. Uh, protein bars, stay away from most protein bars actually are like glorified candy bars and they have so much sugar that they would take your body out of ketosis anyways. Um, but yeah, this is really all the tricks to it. I'll put links down below for uh, this protein. I'll also put some other recommended proteins that I know will help your body get into ketosis that have all the right stuff. Um, yeah, and I'll put us the sample diet that I talked about. But once again, diets are just guidelines. This is what I use. Um, but you know, you could always talk to your nutritionist, tell them what you're doing. I know a lot of these are changing. Like you can change one protein for the other protein, one complex carbohydrate for the other. Just the guidelines are really what you need to follow. But the water is basically the most important. 
and also getting a lot of sleep. You got to think of getting a good night's sleep like part of your training as well. Um, your body recovers most in sleep, and you actually lose a lot of weight in your sleep. That's when your muscles repair, and your muscles are oh, your body's well, just because you're sleeping. Your body is still feeding off its fat and doing everything, especially if you've been training every day. So, all right, guys, I hope that video helped. Hope you guys make weight. Hope you the best of luck in whatever you're training for. If you like more videos like this, I also have a second channel, MMA Underground. I'll put a link right there. If you guys want to click on that, you can go send over to that channel. Uh, check out more, more MMA gym stuff than I put regularly on this channel. And, uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you later, and peace out.